Governor Patrick has taken some criticism for his attempt to get new revenue for new investment in transportation and education. He's calling for significant amounts of revenue, but he also says avoiding new taxes will also have a price. That was the message again today at the State House in a rally supporting the agenda and taking part in the rally and getting in touch with state legislators were two of our guests we'd like to welcome from the Mass Senior Action Council, John Robinson, and from Community Labor United. Terry Marshall, thank you both very much for being with us. Thank, thank you, you for having us. I want to start with Terry Marshall. Uh, talk about the cross-section of people today. And this is a crowd with, with overflow crowds. Yes, yes. Um, today there was a lot of activity at, over at the State House as uh, you had a rally by the um, Coalition for Our Communities, which is fighting for uh, revenue, for um, overall revenue for the state for many different uh, services that uh, low income and, and also communities across the board need, which is like education, transportation, and jobs. Um, our coalition, uh, the Public Transit for Public Good campaign, um, we're specifically focusing on revenue for transit and also uh, fixing transit, other things to fix transit overall. But we wanted to come out and show support on um, you know, the, the governor's uh, bill, uh, the, the governor's proposal plan uh, that is not, uh, that at the same time we've sort of the principles in it, we don't want to neglect uh, other critical services to our community. So transit along with all the uh, overall revenue. John, what about how you get the revenue? Because I know the T has said uh, if, if they want to keep service pretty much the way it is, they're going to have to raise uh, fares by something like 30, 33 uh, percent. Why not just raise fares for people who use the system instead of raising taxes? Well, raising the fares on the people who use the system is not a solution. Uh, the reason I say that is because the system is broken and over the years the legislature hasn't really done anything to fix the problem. They've been kicking the can down the road, as in their words. So what we need is dedicated funding. We need to, as the Green Justice Coalition says, we need to fix the system, we need to fund it, and we, and we need to make it fair. And by that I mean we need an accessible transportation system to all people who use it, and we need an equitable transportation, and, and one that uh, so that people are not left out of the community, because right now people are left out in the community. Terry, another way that, that people are left out is, is in how long it takes them to get where they need to go. I think Boston Magazine had this survey, and uh, they said one of the longest commutes was from way down the South Shore, but just as long was the commute downtown from Mattapan. Yes, uh, you know, we think one of the problems in that is. Um, you know that the the assessments, right? The assessments that the transit boards have to make, they're not. Uh, you know, a lot of times they're not efficient because they're not uh, including the voice of the people who actually ride and use it. And you know, as our our coalition, Public Trans Public Good, um, is proposing two different bills. Uh, one bill is to have a more public uh, voice in the decision making of public transit, right? So it make it mandatory that on every transit board there be a rider um, involved and have a voting right. There also be uh, community led assessments of the transit system to find out what's the most efficient way, uh, different routes that people actually use and need to get to work, to get to school, uh, have the opportunity to actually like close this like gap in, of inequity. Like why does it take so long to get somewhere? By the way, wh why does it take so long? Get downtown from Mattapan. Mattapan. One of these reasons, like it, one of the things could be that this particular route um, that w where, you know, where uh, mode of public transit decided to use that is take that, is take that long. Um, that route may not just be going the most uh, efficient way that people actually are, you know, where people actually are at, you know. Um, Either they, they could be where it's not used for the, the benefits of the folks who live along that line. You know, there could be other decisions. And you involved. got some heavy traffic, Grove Hall and places like that. And right, 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 as well. And, you know, and if people had a, uh, we have a more robust transit system, uh, folks would choose to use the bus instead of cars, you know, which also would be better for the environment as well, less car congestion. Yeah. John, what, what about the ability of people to absorb a, a fare increase? Because I know the governor, one of his ideas is for lowering the sales tax, raising the income tax. The more money you make, yes, the more you pay. But as opposed to raising um, T fares, let's say twenty or thirty dollars a month for a monthly pass, um, um, how do you compare that? Because if you're a rider and, and you say, well, twenty or thirty dollars, that that might be less than some taxpayers are paying. Well, last year they raised the. They said they raised the average fare twenty three percent on everybody in the system, 
But people forget that they raised the fares 100% and more on people with disabilities and elders. This is on people the ride. People who use the ride, the, ride, the paratransit system for people who can't use the buses and the trains. And people who are on that type of income, people on social security disability, people who live in nursing homes who have a personal needs allowance from the state of $72.80, uh, people on very low incomes cannot afford the system the way it is now. In fact, they were priced out of the system when the T raised the fares last year, and we're calling for a rollback in the price of the ride to, to where it's affordable. In other words, where it was $2, we were trying to get it, even if they could just hold it to two fifty, we would have settled for that last year, but that we were unsuccessful to try to get that in an amendment. So um, it's, a human, it's a human story because this is a lifeline for people People with disabilities and elders, they're not going to church, they're not going to visit their family, uh, they're skipping exercise classes, they're not going to the senior center. All of the things that make life worthwhile for elders and for people with disabilities, they're not able to participate in the community and now they find themselves really trapped in their homes because they just can't get out. Terry, talk about the people concerned about it because when I saw the crowd and the overflow crowds today, there were a lot of people in purple t-shirts from uh, Service Employees International. Uh, so why are they so concerned about this? Uh, these are working people. Um, you know, that's primarily the folks who are using uh, public transportation and why it's needed. The most of society is working people. Well, they uh, work in the office buildings and uh, hospitals. And yep, all, all over, across the board, um, across race, you know, across lines. Um, it's, you know, like John said, it's the, it's the lifeline. You know, it's lifeline, it's the economic lifeline for cities. General is the lifeline for many people. It's like education opportunities, job opportunities, um, you know, go places to exercise <laughs> and ju just get out. Uh, you need public transit. This is why, uh, you know, all these people are coming out. You know, like we need all these critical services along, you know, education, uh, jobs, all these things need to be funded. This is, you, this, and when you, the crowds you saw, you're seeing the public. This is who's affected. This is the reflection. These are people coming out uh, supporting, like, yes, we need more revenue. We need to find more ways uh, to invest in our communities. And, of course, the governor brought, brought up uh, preschool, and I guess if you live in a neighborhood where you've got an underperforming school, I guess uh, the problems that's supposed to fix might be one of the main reasons you've got, a, got an underperforming school. Exactly. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you both very much for being with us. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having us.